It's Jason Abraham, the shadow teacher. And today, we're going to start this journey with some ideas from the great Sun Tzu, from his classic, The Art of War. And one of the concepts presented in this book is that when warring factions are battling one another, the faction that is able to disable the communication of the other side has a much higher chance of winning the war, of winning the battle. So one of the first things an army is going to do, or, or a warring faction is going to do, is to try to disable communication from the other side. So I'm going to diverge a little bit. Uh, some of you don't know this, but I have a background as a mind-body coach. That is what I do for a job. Many of you have asked me what my my job is, what I do for income, because I am not a professional YouTuber. I'm just doing this to share from the goodness of my soul. Though at some point, I most likely will jump onto a membership platform, as with the the tightening down of communications in the world. That's where I'm going with this video. So, one of the main components to thriving as a human, see, as a wellness coach, to be really good at it, you essentially need to study the human being. You need to really understand what makes one tick. Because no matter what one's individual goals are, when you understand the environment you can set for a human being to thrive, for them to express themselves in the highest vitality, both physically, mentally, spiritually, then that, that is ultimately your job. And you're looking to see what the obstacles are. And as I'm saying, what are the conditions that need to be met where one is optimized. So a few years ago, there was a study out that was looking into relationships. And this particular study, I can't, rem I, I can't remember the exact name of it, if you, if you search the study of this content, you will find this information, was saying that having deep, meaningful relationships was every bit as important to a thriving health and for, for longevity, for, for people living longer lives, as diet, sleep, and exercise. So now, I want to circle back to the Sun Tzu concept and bring this into the realm of narcissistic abuse. So one of the tactics of a narcissistic abuser, we call it cutting away at the edges. And what the narcissist does is the narcissist starts to, to get enmeshed and entwined in the relationships of their victim. The narcissist starts to become part of those relationships as well. And when the narcissist victim does not want to do what the narcissist wants them to do, then the narcissist punishes them by destroying the relationships, cutting the victim off from their friends and their family. And in some cases, the, the narcissist, with the cutting away at the edges, what the narcissist will do, it will turn the relationships against their victim. So those who were once friends become antagonists of the victim because the narcissist poisons their mind. The narcissist infiltrates their consciousness and earns their trust and then turns their friends and family against them. And then when the victim is isolated and lonely, then the narcissist has a greater chance of breaking them, of breaking down their will, of confusing them, of just raping their mind and at that point the narcissist when, when the victim's broken the narcissist can just do whatever they want with them now narcissists can be individuals or they can also be institutions or they can even be spiritual entities this form of abuse is not limited to just person to person it can be on a mass scale. It's just a standard technique 
and the unhealthy dynamic of abuser and victim. So I'm giving this out to you. I'm presenting this because I've seen this so many times. I've experienced it in my personal life. That is why I am passionate about sharing this information with you because many people are confused and they're lonely and they're feeling pain and they're running in circles and they just don't even know they're doing it and they don't understand why. But the psychopathic, narcissistic consciousness, this is what they thrive on. They thrive on chaos and they thrive on manipulation. Their end game is control. And these spirits, these entities are never happy. They can never find joy or happiness. They're just not capable. So their fleeting happiness is based off of the illusion of control. So again, I'm just giving you the concept, but I give you some homework. Take a look around, look in the world. Where is this happening? How is this happening? Uh, an event happened to me relatively recently that I'll cite where I was had a platform where I was connecting with people and just building you know I was, I was doing my thing but my spirit was was building meaningful connections and this particular entity wanted to control me so they, they shut me down so whenever this happens the gut wrench reaction may be fear it may be wanting to apologize wanting to crawl back to the narcissist and beg them for mercy and this is the wrong thing to do this is what they want them to do this gives them their control so the hard thing to do is to look yourself in the mirror and say I am worthy of love I love myself and I respect myself and when I am in this power of love and respect and reverence for my own soul, I'm going to find a way out of this relationship. And I'm going to find a way to connect with these friends and these families, these people who are meaningful, who this narcissist has taken out of my life. And I'm committed to doing this. And I'm going to get this toxic entity out of my life and be done with them. So... That's all I got for you today. Class dismissed.